Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx, and thank you fillers. I'm your host, Amanda Euler. Edward is currently on the road, and while he was away, the matriarch will still play. Today we're playing Fort Sumter, The Secession Crisis, 1860-61. to The game was designed by Mark Herman and published by GMT Games this year, like just a few days I ago. I got it in the mail last week, yeah, actually. Yeah, so I am joined today by with Brian. He will Hello, be everyone. teaching the game, so welcome, Brian. And good to be here. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So we're going to go on to the main board, and he will teach, and then I will bring the chat and everything back up. All right. So this is a, uh, a short little card card driven game by GMT. Um, you're going to be playing um, these strategy cards here to place pieces out on the board and trying to do some area control mm -hmm. is, is ultimately you know what we're going to be going after. So I'm just going to jump right into it. We're going to show some of these cards. Um, because they're going to drive the entirety of the gameplay. So we have here, as you can see, I'm going to be playing the Union side. Amanda's going to be playing the uh, Secessionist side. Um, so I'm trying to keep the Union together, mm -hmm. although we all know, ultimately know that that's not really going to happen. Correct. Um, so we're going to try to be in better positions along when, when the war actually does break up. So the entirety of the gameplay is going to be driven through the uh, card play here. We're going to be dealt four cards each on a given turn. And we're going to go through one at a time and play a card for either the event or the, uh, you know... Action points. The action points there. Um, and if we play a card for the action points, you're going to just... Whatever the number is, you're going to get to pick uh, that many um, tokens out of the... Oops. Out of the, uh, uh, the track here or from your token pool, if we have any there. And you're going to be able to place those on the board wherever you want. If you play an event of the same color as you, so I am, I'm blue, so I could play this card for the event, you're just going to do whatever it says on, on the event. This example here says, add up to three tokens to one political space. And it's got the little bell as a little reminder of what the political spaces are. Uh, and then that would be my action. Um, so we're going to go back and forth three times per round, and there are three rounds in the game uh, until we get to the end, and then there's a final, a final crisis uh, scoring that happens at the end of the game. So let's just talk about um, uh, how a round is going to play out. So we're going to deal four cards out to each of us. Then we're going to deal two of these objective cards out. Now these objective cards are going to have an area on the board. So you can see here's Fort Sumter itself. And then here's Federal ars uh, Arsenals, wherever that's at on the, on the board. Here, here we go, right here, Federal Arsenals. And what's going to happen is we're gonna get, you're going to get two of them, and you're going to get to pick one. And we're going to take it, whichever one you pick, and you're going to put it here under your little hidden objective space. It's on the board there. At the end of the round, at the end of our, our three-card play round, we're both going to flip these, and we're going to score a victory point, a victory point uh, for each of these that you control. So if I had controlled Fort Sumter and Amanda had picked... Federal arsenals, but I also control that space. I would actually get two victory points, vice versa. Mm -hmm. If she had done it, she would have gotten two or split, whatever. Then, if you control your card, so if Fort Sumter was my card, you're going to get to do a special action. Basically, it's going to be some additional. You know, you planned your turn well, so you get a, you get an additional bonus out right. of it. And they're pretty they're pretty straightforward. Uh, either add stuff to the board, usually related to the card you played, or remove some tokens from play. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have the four cards dealt to us, then we're going to have the two. We're going to pick one of them, put it in the hidden objective, and we're going to put the other one back in the deck and shuffle it in so we don't know what, what each of us picked. Then, um, based on the first player, and the unionists will always break ties as far as first player goes, otherwise it's whoever has more victory points. So if at the end of round one, Amanda has three victory points, she'll be the first player in round two. 
Otherwise, if it's tied on victory points, it'll always go to the Union. So on the first turn, I'll take the first strategy card play, and we'll just go back and forth one at a time. The cards, again, can be played for the event if they're the same color as you, or there's there are some here that have a, a blue-gray slash color box behind the number there, and that means either of us could play this event for the, for the, uh, uh, the effect. Otherwise, it's a three-action point card. Um, so we'll go back and forth until we've both played three cards and you have one card left in your hand. You, you're going to take that last card, and you're going to put it upside down under this final crisis uh, card there, which you guys can kind of see along the edge here of the board. And we're going to use those cards on the final crisis round, which is the fourth, kind of the fourth round of the game, if you will. Um, then, once that's done, we're going to look at these white bordered areas. So, I, let me step back a little bit. I kind of jumped the gun here a little bit. What we're really trying to do, like I said, is kind of area control. So you got, you've got three yellow, three green, three red, and three blue-ish, greenish mm -hmm. colors, whatever. Um, and that's where you're going to be trying to do your area control is across the colored spaces. Mm -hmm. Additionally, there's in each color, there's one of these spaces that has a white border around them. It's a pivotal space. And those are called, yeah, those are called pivotal spaces. So after we've played our four cards... And we've put our, our extra card down here. I'm putting down here. We're going to look at, again, in turn order, who controls pivotal spaces. So if, you know, in the example here, I'm still the first player. If I control these two pivotal spaces, they're going to give me an action. And you can see the action. It's actually on the board down here. And that is move or remove two, two tokens from that space. So if I control the border spaces, and I look down here on my math legend, if, I'm sorry, if I, yeah, if I control the border spaces, which is a pivotal space, then I get to move or remove two tokens from these areas. That could be mine, I could spread out my tokens if I want, or I could remove a man's mm -hmm. tokens. Any removed tokens are going to come down here to the token pool. And then once we both have done that, so I'll, you know, if I control two, I'll do the actions in these, and if mana controls two, she would do the pivotal space bonus action in those. Then after that, we're going to score the dimensions, and the dimensions are the, the three like-colored spaces. Um, you're going to get one victory point if you have, in each space, control of that space. And control is just having more than your opponent. Mm -hmm. Okay? Put that one back. Um, and if you control all three spaces, you're going to get a victory point. Um, so it's not, it's not a high-scoring game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think our average scores were 7 to 12-ish yeah. in, in the few games we played. Um, then, after we score the, the dimensions, the like three colors, we're going to do that uh, objective flip. So I would have my objective, I would flip it. Amanda mm -hmm. would flip her objective. And then we would score these. So if I can, you know, whoever controls these two spaces in particular with these objectives is going to score a victory point for each one they control. And then again, if, if Federal, or I'm sorry, if Fort Sumter was my card and I controlled it, I'm going to get this bonus action here. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then... We're going to check to see if we trigger the end of the game. So what we're going to do here now is kind of show this track here. And what, what this track is, is there's a numbered system in here. And it starts with 15. It looks like big chunky numbers everybody can see on the stream there. Um, and what happens is if I play a card that says place three tokens in play. So I would take 15, 14, and 13 off and place them in play. The next time I play, if it says if I play something that, you know, that allows me to play three more, I take three more off and I put them wherever it is I'm playing them. And now I've moved into a new color zone. So you can kind of see there's the, the, the natural color here, then there's yellow, there's orange, and then there's red. When you, when you, and that's called breaching, moving into, mm -hmm. moving, uh, or removing a token from a new zone. When I breach this area, I'm going to get these two bonus tokens into my token pool. I'll try to make sure to leave them on the on Especially the board with here. it being blue. Yeah, especially with it being blue. It'll be yeah. easier to see. Um, and that's going to happen for Amanda as well. Okay. Then, when we breach up to the, and now as a reminder, the next time I play a card, I have to use these tokens first mm -hmm. before, I be, before I remove from the board anymore. Um, and then when I get to the point where I breach again by playing a card that, you know, gets all my tokens out here probably in the second round or later, mm -hmm. um, this area is called the tension zone, and there's going to be two things that happen. The first, you know, you're going to get your three tokens, and then we're going to have this little white meeple here. 
And you're going to get to pay, play, the first person that breaks the tension zone is going to get to play that meeple, and he's called the Peace Commissioner. You're going to get to play him in any one zone on the board. And what he does is he blocks all movement, um, or all placing or removing of tokens from that zone. So you're kind of blocking out, you know, if I, if I really want to make sure I control the border states, I'll place them there with my three tokens. Now unless Amanda plays a card, and there are a few cards in the, in the deck here that allow movement of this, but mm -hmm. unless she plays a card, that Peace Commissioner is there. When Amanda breaches the tension zone, she does not get that peace commissioner move. It's only the first yeah, person. Yeah, it's only to do the that. first person. Then the last zone is when we break this red zone here by play again by playing tokens to get everything out here. Um, this is going to partially trigger the, thing, the end of the game. So what happens is the first person to breach it is going to get all four of these tokens into their pool. They're also going to lose one victory point. You can see that's right here on the board. It might be a little hard to see on the on the thing, or on the stream there. But first person is going to get all four of their tokens, but they lose a victory point. The second person will only get two of their tokens, but the second that two of these, uh, you know, uh, we both have breached this zone, we're going to end the game after that round. So the game's either going to last three rounds or potentially two rounds if we both right. manage to breach during the second round. Otherwise, it will go the full three mm -hmm. rounds. So we did have it come real close in one of our practice games yep. to, to breaching in the second round, but it ended up, ended up being just short. Um, and then in the final crisis, so that's that's the three rounds of play. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that three rounds, three hands, uh, you know, four cards each, two hidden objectives, and pick one of them, each, each of us, each round. Then when we get to the final crisis round, what's going to happen is Every round, you've had an extra card that you've put down here in your final crisis card area. You're going to pick those three cards up. We're going to take the Peace Commissioner off the game, off the board. Then, when you're looking at your final crisis cards, all you care about is the color of the cards here. All the text and the numbers on the, on the cards are, are you can ignore at this point. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is take these three cards hidden from your opponent, and you're going to decide in what order you want to play them. So I might say I want to do two armaments and then a secession in a row. And you're going to put those cards face down until we've both done that. Let's just get a little example set up here, Amanda. Mm -hmm. And I just set up a perfect example even. Of course. Um, and we're both going to... So when we start the final crisis round, which is right here, we're both going to flip one card over. And if the colors match... If the colors match... Starting in turn order, so you know, if we're towards the end of the game and I've, I'm ahead on points there, I would be the first player. I'm going to remove one of my tokens from the armaments um, crisis dimension or two of my tokens from anywhere on the board. So depending on what, what the area control situation is at that time, you know, you may end up, okay, I can, I can afford to lose one right. here, that's okay. I'm like, oh, maybe I can't, I have to take two from here. So it's very, it's very tactical at that point, you know, mm -hmm. what, what the losses are going to be. Then Amanda would have to do the same thing because she had the second, the same color. Then we would play that one, then we'd flip again, and we both got the same color again, which happens to be armaments again, so we'd have to do the same thing. Remove one of your own from that uh, dimension, or two from anywhere. Oh, Here, I did, I did not, hours. I did not set it up you perfect. I thought okay. I did. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> then, if you have differing colors, Starting with the start player, you may move up to two of your tokens from any spaces or your token pool onto one or two spaces of the color I played. So then at that point, I could say, okay, I've got these two tokens I'm going to take from my pool, and maybe I'll put one here and one here, and now I have control of this crisis dimension because I have the majority in all three of these spaces. Mm -hmm. And then Amanda would do the same thing from her, with her public opinion. And then after all of that is done, we're going to do final scoring which is just one victory point for every crisis dimension you control, just like at the end of a round, one victory point specifically if you control Fort Sumter, mm -hmm. and one victory point if you have three or more tokens in your pool than your opponent does. So at this point, I only have two, man has zero. I do not have more three or more, so I would not score a victory mm -hmm. point there. End of game, and you score it up. And that's it. That's it? Yep. It's a quick teach. It's a quick play. Yeah, it is. Uh, one last thing I will mention is that you can have, at most, each player can have, at most, four tokens per space. So Amanda could have four here, and I could have four here, and because we're tied on the count, neither of us controls that space. 
That's right. That's it. So let's let me set up my track here again as I completely mauled the track in. <laughs> And we'll get going. Yeah, so if you want to shuffle things here. Sure. All right. Anybody have any questions before we get started? Pretty simple teach, so you should be okay, but just in case. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Absolutely. All right. Hello, Rabbi. You could go in, James. Do not show your child any mercy. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Okay. And Tony, nobody brought me any helmets. I was, I was, if I could have gotten a helmet, I was uh, going to wear a helmet. I considered stopping at Ark Village on the way here <laughs> just to see if I could find one. I really <laughs> did consider it. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, so you'll deal four of those, and I'll deal two of these to us. And you do get to look at your hand and decide, you mm -hmm. know, okay, what's going to help me complete these objectives this turn? I agree. One last rule we forgot to talk about. We did, about. yeah. Yeah, go we ahead. do. There's an optional rule in the game, and we are going to play with it because I think it adds a little bit. It adds a little bit of play to this. Mm -hmm. And basically, it says, if I play a gray action card, I can't play the event because that's a and that's an action for Amanda. But what Amanda can do is, I'll put this card to the side. Is Amanda could then discard on her turn any card value of one or higher to take that card into her hand and, and then immediately play it. So that's an optional rule in the back uh, back of the page there, but I think I think it's we, a we good rule. It, yeah, we played it both ways and liked it a lot better Yeah, that way for sure. All right, so I have chosen my hidden objective. Okay. Can I just pick some new hidden objectives? Because no. particularly like that's either of these, I guess. That's how this but, works. And then these these objectives that we did not take actually get shuffled right back in. Mm -hmm. So they can they can be selected in another round. Hey Steph. Thanks for coming. Alrighty. And then because we are tied on victory points, you I'm go. the genius player. I'm gonna get to go first. That's correct, sir. Um so I'm just gonna go ahead right away and play uh we'll play these over here. And I will play a okay. A secessionist card, but I'm going to play it for the two points. So I'll take the highest number, so 15 and 14, and I will play those anywhere I want. So I could spread out, I could, I could uh, put them in the same space, whatever I want to do. I'm going to put one there in newspapers and one there in Washington. Okay. All right. I am going to play. I'm not going to play that card. Okay. So that can yeah, we just away. discard that one. So I'm going to play Southern Senators Resign. Add up to three tokens to public opinion and or political spaces. So I'm going to take three tokens from here. And anytime it says up to, that is zero to whatever mm -hmm. the number is. I'm going to put those all in Washington. Ooh. Influence in Washington. All yes, right. Sir. Um, so I'm going to play another secessionist card, Louisiana secedes, but I'm only getting it for the two option, the two uh, act action points there. So I will get these, and I'm going to put one in um, Fort Sumter and one, one in Federal Arsenals. Okay. I'm not going to play that either. Okay. I'm going to play Peace Commissioners. Place the Peace Commissioner in either the Washington or F Fort Sumter space. Ooh. So I'm going to take the Peace Commissioner and put him in Washington. So that blocks all play by both of us in the Washington space specifically. Correct. Okay, um, so this will be our last card play on the first round here. Um, I'm also going to play Peace Commissioners, but I'm actually going to play it for the three, the three uh, action points here. So okay. I'm going to take one, two, three, which will breach the escalation zone. So first I finish my action, and I'm going to put one in Fort Pickens. I'm going to put um, two in Montgomery. Okay. okay? And then we resolve the breaching of the zone here, and that just says in the es escalation, I get these two tokens, and they go into my token pool. So now I have to play those first before I can take any more from the from the uh, tracks there. Okay. And that's done. Okay. Now, since th this is my last play, you wouldn't mm -hmm. have the opportunity to do this anyway. Correct. It is a unionist card, but you would not have the opportunity mm -hmm. to do it. So I am going to do one in... Oh, no. Yeah, I'm going to do one. One. That's yeah. right. And I'm going to put that in Fort Sumter because I don't okay. want you to have that. All righty. Okay. So. That's it. So our last crisis. card that we each have are going to just be placed under here in the final crisis mm -hmm. cards area. And we'll use those in the final crisis round there. That's right. Okay. 
Um, now we're going to perform the pivotal space bonus actions. So again, I'm the first player here. So I've got one here at Federal Arsenals. So I can move or remove two tokens from our, uh, armaments areas. Mm -hmm. So I will remove one. Mm -hmm. Oop, there's your and that token goes to the pool. pool. Yep. And that's it. Okay. Then um, I control political the, space. The Washington, the Washington Washington political space. space. Yep. So I can add or remove or remove two or move them. Yep. Um, Well, no, I don't, because I only have that. I don't have all three. No, that's the victory point. That's the victory point. That's yeah, right. this is the bonus okay, action. So but you can't I move. can't, because yeah. he, he's there. So that's all that matters. Okay. But you could. I could there, so I'm going to remove that and put that in your token pool. Actually, you can do both of them, because it's up oh, to two. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bye, Brian. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so then. Um, oh, I didn't do my other newspaper, but I have nothing you, else yeah, to do nothing in newspaper. Do. Anyway. Right. Okay, then after that, we're going to uh, score the crisis dimensions. So I do control all three armaments crisis dimensions, so mm -hmm. that will give me one victory point. Right. Um, I do not control the opinion right. area. Yeah, uh, I do not control nobody has anything mm -hmm. in the borders, the secession area, and nobody has control of all of the political spaces. Correct. So that's it. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to both flip this and score these. So starting with start player, mm -hmm. I scored newspapers. I do have one there, so that will score me one point. Mm -hmm. Amanda got Washington, so that will give her one point as well. Yep. And then because we both met our objectives, now we do them in turn order, or in uh, player order. So this says, if you have played this card and control the newspaper space, you may remove up to two tokens from any one space. Well, I can't remove them from Washington because of the Peace Commissioner, and that is the only space I would want to remove tokens. Mm -hmm. So I will choose not to remove okay. any tokens. Mine is, if you played this card and control the Washington space, which I do, mm -hmm. I may remove up to two tokens from political or public opinion spaces. So I will remove that, that one, from newspapers. There we go. All right. That's round one. That's round one. Bonk. Round two. More of the same. More of the same. Two, three, four. All right. All right, let's see here. He's here. Hmm. Well then. That's interesting. Okay. We'll do this one here. We'll do this one. Okay. And then I have more victory points here, mm -hmm. so you don't even first. need to do the tiebreaker. I nope. will start play here. And now we both have tokens in our pool, so we both will have to choose from those tokens first yep. when playing cards out. That is correct. All right. And the Peace Commissioner is still there and annoying. <laughs> All right. I'm going to play a Unionist card, John Brown's Body, and I'm going to play it for the event. And I'm going to say, add up to three tokens to Secessionist spaces. So I can spread those out, and I will spread those out one to each space. Okay. All right. I am going to play... A secessionist card, Calhoun's Legacy, add up to three tokens, two secession spaces. Alrighty then. So I'm going to do the exact <laughs> same thing. So one, yep. two, three. That does breach, which I will do that. Yep. So one, two, three. And I get these in my pool. Yep. All right. I got to look at my objective again because I've already forgotten it. There we go. Yeah, I know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's let's play Frederick Douglass. Add up to three tokens to, this is a union card, so I do get to play for the action. Add up to three tokens to one public opinion space. So I'll take two and one more, and I will put them in newspapers. Okay. Okay, I'm going to play a secessionist card. Georgia secedes, add up to three tokens to the deep south space. So I'll take two mm -hmm. from my token pool and one from there. Now I'm at max. Correct. Well, I'm going to look at my final crisis card here. Just make sure I don't do things I don't like. Um, I will play Sam Houston, which is a union card. And it says, add up to three tokens to the Texas space. So I will go one, two, breach into this zone, three, and breach into that zone. Wow. All in one play. So that will max me out in Texas. Mm -hmm. Then I resolve the breaches, 
So this first says these go to my pool. Then when I breach the final crisis, all four of these are going to go to my pool as well, and we'll I'm going to lose a victory point. point. Yep. Okay, so that would the peace commissioner would you be able to move oh, him yes, now? Oh yes, yes, I do get to move him now. Where do we want to put him? Uh, let's put him in federal arsenals. Okay. Okay, hang on just one second. Let me see here. Thanks, yes. Matt. Yeah, thanks, 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 thanks Clegger. We really appreciate your support. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, I am going to play... Amanda the gets the Peace Commissioner? You're right. I said it backwards. You're totally right. Oh, thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, Mark. <laughs> the designer of the game. Thank you. It is the opponent that moves the, oh, the Peace Commissioner. Yes. Fantastic. Even better. And we will go here. That, I assume you really want that space, yes. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to play this for the action points, actually. Okay. So one, then this is going to breach that. Mm -hmm. Two, three. So I'm going to go here. here. Oh, you had three in your pool. No, oh, I, just, no. I just pulled them. They just got there. Yeah, yep, my bad. That's my okay. bad. That's okay. And one in there. Alrighty. And then okay. we both have a card left. Thank you. I'm going to here into the final crisis cards. Yes, sir. All right. Pivotal space action. So again, we're tied on score, so I'll get the tie break as the unionist. So I'll look at mine. So Amanda's going to get those. I'm going to get these. So on the newspapers, I'm going to do the move option. I'm going to move one there and one there. Mm -hmm. And then here in the armaments area, I will remove, remove. one mm -hmm. and just do that. Okay. So then I have Washington has had political in secession. Mm -hmm. So I will remove that. Yeah. And you can remove one and move one as well. Yes. Although moving only one doesn't really help in this it situation. It doesn't. Okay, then for secession, I'm going to remove these two okay. from here. Boy, my token pull is huge it's at this point. Enormous. All right. <clears throat> All right, and then we're going to score the crisis dimensions. Mm -hmm. So we can see nobody controls this one because right. there's no control there. I'm going to get one point there. And one point for the mm -hmm. armaments, so two, two total. And I do not control nope. secession because of Texas. Yep. Which is my home state. You would think that they would be nicer to me. <laughs> All right. So then All now right. we do objectives. We reveal our objectives here. So I got the abolitionist space. Okay. So that's going to get me a victory mm -hmm. point. And then you got the border, border states, states, which is right here. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely going to get you a point. Yep. And then in turn order, if you played this card and control the abolitionist space, you may remove up to two tokens from any one space. Let's remove. Let's remove two here from the border states. Okay. So if I play the card and control border states, which I no longer do. Yeah. So now I can't do that. You do not get the option. Yeah, yes. that's correct. That is correct. Okay. So All right. we are in round three. Yep. So you can see I breached final crisis. I did not. Just but... short. So we, we will go to round three then, yep. Mm -hmm. All righty. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. I think it's going to be that one for me. All right. Um, you were first. Yep, I still got the point lead, so I will play the first action here. Now I have to decide what I want my action to be. Um, let's start with Naval Relief. I'm going to play it for the action. It says, I'm going to play the top part. It says, add up to three tokens to the Fort Sumter and or Fort Pickens spaces. So I'm going to put two in Fort Sumter and one in Fort Pickens. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Sure. 
right, I am going to... Yeah, Jared, it is a fast game. Yes. It is a fast game. Yes, it is. All right, I am going to play a Secessionist PGT Beauregard. Add two tokens to the Fort Sumter space or remove one opposing token from the Fort Sumter space. I am going to add two tokens okay. to the Fort Sumter space. All righty. Um, let's see. I'm going to play Social Elites. And it says, move up to four of your tokens from any public opinion or political spaces to your token pool. So I'm going to choose to not take any off to my pool. Then it says, add up to four tokens to political spaces. Since I've already got plenty of tokens in the pool here, let's just uh, make sure you can't spread out and take control of those spaces there. I hate to argue with the designer, but the card says... That if I played the guitar, the if I played the guitar, if I played this card <laughs> and control the border state space, I don't. I at the time I did oh. not control. Because yeah, we were we it, actually had a question on that when we were playing. Yeah, but we assumed it was because we read. We, if you go by what the card physically, the card says. We thought that was one of the the you know little sniper strike things yeah. you could do with if you're the first player. But if yeah. not, then then go ahead and play that action. What was it? Yeah. Um, remove up to two tokens from secession spaces. So you probably would have wanted to tag Texas, Texas then. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. The case, then okay. We thought it was an interesting way to snipe snipe mm -hmm. uh, objectives away from Most people. Def yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. <laughs> All right. I am going to play Jefferson Davis. Add, um, add up to three tokens to political spaces or remove up to two opposing tokens from one secession or armament space. So I'm going to move Ooh. that. All right, last play here, huh? Well, that changes things. Good. <laughs> so I'm going to play Governor Pickens just for the uh, action points. So it'll be two points. And yeah, I think I'm going to add them two right back to those. Federal arsenals there. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to do that. Okay. I am going to use this for the action points. Okay. I'm going to put three in the Ooh, arsenals. Going big. Yeah. All right. And then both of our last cards go here to the final crisis cards. And there we go. <clears throat> and now we're going to uh, perform the pivotal space bonus actions. So starting with me, I do not control border states. I don't control there. I do control newspapers, mm -hmm. but I do not want to move or add, move or <laughs> remove two tokens from, uh, from yourself? opinion spaces. So I will do nothing there. Okay. And Amanda controls that one. Yes. So now Amanda will get the bonus actions on both of these mm -hmm. dimensions. So I will remove, hmm, interesting. Here, I'm for sure going to remove those. Mm -hmm. And for the political, I'll remove one from here. One from each. Page. All right. Now we'll score the crisis dimensions. So we'll turn order here. We'll start mm -hmm. with me. I've got the opinion space, so I will get mm -hmm. one there. And that's it. That's it. Amanda's got. Uh, she does not control mm -hmm. the political opinion I space because I have those. And I do not control the armaments nope, or secession. No, because I have Fort Perkins. And, yeah, we're tied there. Mm -hmm. So Amanda scores no points on that. Yep. Now we're going to reveal and score our objectives. I've got state assemblies, so I'll get a point out of that at least. I have federal arsenal, so I will oh, get yeah. a point out of you that. You get your point there. Mm -hmm. All right. If, if I played this card and control the state assembly space, you may move up to two tokens from any one space. Where? Well, yeah, I'm going to remove well, those Fort Sumters. Yeah, those Fort Sumters are gone. Yes. All right. So, um, if you played this card and control the federal arsenal space, you may remove up to three tokens from armament spaces or remove up to one token from any space. Ooh, options. Yes, there are options. And I believe I am going to. Fort Sumter doesn't score until the very, very end. So, after we do our. Right. Our three final crisis cards. So, yeah, so that situation could still change. Correct. Yes. So that. Hmm. 
I think I'm going to remove both from Fort Pickens okay. and Fort Sumter. Is it up to three then? Yep. Ooh, up to nice. three from armament spaces. Man, my token pool is huge. It I can is. barely anything on the board here. <laughs> this is crazy. All right. So now we. So are we did the final score. So now we're going to. Final crisis. Yep. Final crisis. So we're going to take these three cards here, and we're going to arrange them in order. Or if you're in my case, there's no real there's order no to order. be uh, order played no because order. I did not. I did not plan well. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag plan better. Okay. Yes, ha hashtag plan yes, better. I don't have the I still don't have a challenge coin. Okay. All right. So now we're going to both flip Two, these. Three. I got secession. My armaments. So they are different. So I have to always read this just to make sure I'm playing it correctly here. Each player starting with first player may move up to two of his tokens from any spaces and or the token pool into one or two spaces of that played type. So... I'm going to take these two and put them... Oh, one thing we forgot to do. Oh, yeah, he goes away. The Peace Commissioner comes off, yes, that at is this correct. point. Yep. Um, not that that's going to change what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do this right there. Put two of those right there. Okay. I am going to take armaments and put one in Fort Pickens and one in Fort Sumter. Nice. Nicely done. Flip. <gasps> Huge surprise. Ooh. Ooh. So now... Um, starting with first player, I have to remove one from that from that uh, dimension mm -hmm. or two from anywhere else. Well, I'm already lost the deep south there, so I'm just going to remove that one from there. Right. Well, yeah, it's kind of the same yeah. thing, really. Yeah. That didn't really get much. Okay. And, and big well. surprise, <laughs> secession. All right, what? so. Unfortunately, it doesn't really help me, though. I'll take control of Texas, but it doesn't really do me any good. Mm -hmm. And that's it for me. And I will do the same thing. And that's up two. So you don't have to do this in it's the really case not. that you would be trying to stay within three of right. me, but I already have a you gigantic have supply so here. Many. Yeah. So I can either add two or remove one, right? No, no, this is add only. So add it's, only? It's, it's move around within the dimension or oh, add okay. from your pool into All the right. dimension. All right, then yep. that's what I'm going to do. All right, so now we're going to do final scoring. Boop, boop. So you're going to score one, one victory point for each of your crisis dimensions that you control. So nobody controls political dimen mm -hmm. dimension. Uh, nobody controls the secessionist mm -hmm. dimension. Amanda controls the armaments dimension. And I control the opinions dimension. Correct. Okay. Then you're going to score one victory point if for control of the Fort Sumter space. So Amanda's going to get one point from that. And then you're going to get one victory point if you have three or more tokens than your opponent. Well, mm -hmm. I've got plenty you have there. A, a couple. Yep. Yep. So despite and that that's it. Yep. That is that that's is the it. game of Fort that's Sumter. Yep. So uh, eight to eight to five. Hey man, it was closer than like all of our practice. It games. really was actually. Um, so despite having half the cubes on the board, I managed to just. Mm -hmm. It was really the opinions. I got four points out of the opinions. That was half my score right there. Yeah. It was just that was those three on, on yeah. round one. Yep, yep. Um, oh, so Mark is saying he downloaded the rules. We are correct that the card is unclear. Thank you. If oh, okay. you scored the VP for this card, perform the event. So the end. Oh, okay. There so we the go. The cards okay. worded a little bit wonky. but Yeah, we were going off the strict strict wording on the cards. Yeah, so. we were. Good to know. So, Good to know. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Let's see. Let's get the chat up on this one as well. All right, so what do you think? I think it's a great way to get somebody into CGGs for the first time. You know, if I if I were going to play this, you know, for example, with my dad, I've never played any of the stronger Twilight Struggle or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I could, A, it's Civil War, and that's something my dad's interested in, but right. I could totally <laughs> break this game out with him. It's not overly complex, but there's enough going on where you're trying to manage the multiple, you know, the four the four different control areas and the three spaces within the control areas um, you know, that, that it just makes it interesting enough of a game, mm -hmm. um, for me to want this to be in my collection. Right. Absolutely. Um, because it's, yeah, yes, I have the other, you know, I have 89 and Labyrinth and, mm -hmm. and games like that, mm -hmm. but this game is a perfect, you know, intro to like CDGs. Introductory, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Intro to CDGs. And I think it's, I think it's perfect for what it does in that, yeah. in that aspect. Like we talked, we talked about it a little bit when we were still playing, when we were still prepping for this, um, that, it feels like a little bit more think even 13 days, maybe mm -hmm. just a step above, but obviously still a step below 
89 lab toilet, toilet struggle. struggle. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. But it's, def it's definitely a good, you know, if you feel comfortable with like a 13 days base, this would not be a problem for you at, not all. at all. And the more that you play it, the more the, str the strategery, <laughs> the strategery <laughs> can come out. out. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And the more that it, that there's more to do that it, it feels like. So yeah. And the fact that it plays in 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. It's I think awesome. our, our very first game was 30 minutes and that's because yeah. we just kind of kept doubting ourselves yes. and looking stuff up in the yes. rules. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it plays in 20 minutes. I mean, this is a fantastic 20 minute it's, filler game. Yes, it's absolutely. A, it's, yeah. It's perfect for, you know, just if you want to in between games, yeah. slap it down. Absolutely. 10 minute teach, 20 minute play. There you go. Mm -hmm. yep. yes. No problem at all. Um, CDG means card driven, card driven game. Yeah. I think that's what, it's I think that's what it yeah, it's stands card, for. It's card driven game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doubting myself. Yeah, now. right. Card driven game. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, well, good. James say, said that he, he and his daughter have played it like 11 times, and now oh, wow. she's heard that we were playing, so now she's demanding a rematch. Oh, okay. So good. Glad to hear that. Yes. Do not give her any leeway at all. That's how <laughs> she learns. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much, and um, thank you for joining us, and thank you, Brian, for being willing to come over and play Absolutely. the game with me as well. So um, Fantastically fun game. Yes, I love it. Yes, it is. So thank you, Mark, for a wonderful game. Thank you, GMT, Absolutely. as well. Thank you, Mark. So, yes. So on behalf of Edward, who, who is in Denmark right now, hopefully asleep. You better be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, on behalf of Edward and the whole Heavy Cardboard crew, thank you so much for joining us, both live around the world as well as after the fact. Thank you also to our 687 patrons. If you would like to support the show, go ahead and go down to pledgehc.com. Help me get full time so there's more of this type of stuff. And I will see you guys on Thursday. And you guys have a wonderful evening, okay? Bye. Good night, all.